This is Radhika for INS, Indo-Asian News Service. And today we have with us a climate activist, 18-year-old Aditya Dubey, who is the recipient of prestigious Dina Awards 2021. And uh, he won that award for campaigning for environmental causes, especially against the one-time single-use plastic, right? Right, Aditya? Yes. So, hi, Aditya. Let's begin with the first question. Um, tell us about your journey to the awards and what has changed since then? Since I won the awards? Yes, yes. So, I won the Dina Legacy Award this year after winning the Dina Award. And I think it's a great honor for me because, uh, for example, uh, it's that it's the fact that people and the judges and Dinal's brother, Lord Spencer, chose me as worthy of carrying on her legacy and chose me as uh, doing as one of the people as one of the 20 people in the world doing good work regarding the environment and other causes and taking social work forward and so i was very thankful for that and that we had we had a sponsored trip to london uh, in which we was in which we had various workshops and we were able to meet wonderful new people and make connections so i think it was a wonderful experience and i hope that uh, as i continue on forward and do my work from today onwards uh, uh, my word will have more weight in that sense for example earlier people when people used to uh, listen to me then they only used to listen to us 18 year old teenager but now maybe they'll look at me in in the sense of a legacy awardee as well, and maybe they'll come and maybe they'll take my word in more regard, for example, so that we can work on more issues and create a better world. Yes, true. And what led you to become a climate activist in the first place? Uh, so I started working in the environment regarding uh, in 2016. Uh, this was because uh, of the air pollution crisis in New Delhi and the NCR region because it has been very bad over the past few years. I myself suffer from a, from sinusitis and asthmatic cough and people all around me were suffering from various respiratory ailments such as asthma and stuff. My relatives, my friends, everyone was suffering and everyone was wearing masks in New Delhi because of the high pollution levels. And that's why we used to hold protests earlier in the past years because against air pollution crisis and insisted that the government do something. But since the government refused to pay any heed to our word, that's why I filed a case in the Supreme Court last year with my fellow petitioner Aman Banka, in, in which we asked the Supreme Court to help to order the uh, government basically to uh, take steps in order to solve the air pollution. Uh, in uh, uh, Last year, that led to the promulgation of the Commission for Air Quality Management or the CAQM. But um, since the air quality levels have been very horrible this year as well, so the hearings are still continuing weekly and we are still hearing what steps the government should take and what else can be done to improve this. Fine. You had also started uh, some campaigns, like taking some initiatives, like plant a million trees and no car Sundays, right? Uh, what what is yeah. the status? Huh? What is the status of those initiatives as of now? So I have my first tree plant. My first campaign was the plant a million trees initiative which had started with the aim of planting a thousand trees, but then I got too arrogant and increased my aim to a million trees. So now uh, I have a goal to plant a million trees within the next year or so. Till this date, I have uh, our campaign has led to the plantation of around 180,000 trees through many initiatives and events. Okay. And we also ha have a new, we also have another campaign called no car Sunday, in which we encourage people to use public transport and other methods 
uh, uh, to go from one place to another instead of a card on sun on the Sunday of every week. Okay. And that has been going on for for a few months now, and uh, we regularly hold events such as events in which people cycle together mm-hmm. and use public transport together. Uh, and this is a nationwide event. Right. And you know, as a as an eighteen year old climate 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 activist, uh, did you face face any kind of challenges during your campaigns? I did face a few challenges in the sense that uh, people used that people earlier didn't used to hold my word in regard and didn't listen to me because I was just a teenager. So I've been suffering from that problem. And then, for example, uh, the uh, even if we ask the government to do something and hold large protests and stuff, then the government usually doesn't listen to our words because cl- climate and the environment is not a voting issue right now. And the government will only listen to our demands if the demand we are making is related to a voting issue as such. So that's why we are... Uh, so that's why we are facing these problems and why we have approached the Supreme Court. Okay. And it's not just the government either. It's all political parties and state governments and everyone. For example, in the air pollution crisis, we have um, all three governments are at fault. The Delhi government, the Punjab government, the Haryana government and the central government. This is an entirely uh, avoidable situation in the sense that uh, the air pollution crisis in Delhi NCR is caused due to the problem of stubble burning. Uh, I mean, stubble burning amounts to 36% of the air pollution crisis. And uh, stubble burning is an entirely avoidable issue because, uh, but it's not the farmers who are at fault in this case. Uh, the farmers have a limited time period to get rid of the crops on their f- field, and uh, uh, they do not have the they do not have any other fo- any other affordable methods to remove the stubble. So that's why they burn the stubble. If the government can just provide the farmers with mo- with incentives and uh, with incentives to not burn the stubble, or provide them stubble removal machines. Then the then this problem can be entirely solved, but no one is taking any major steps. Right, Aditya, you must have seen that when we speak of uh, uh, air quality issues in Delhi, uh, the stubble mm-hmm. burning it tops the list, right? But just as you said, that it amounts to just you say say twenty six to forty five percent of the air pollution problem. Uh, what about the rest of the uh, rest rest of the sources of pollution. So the rest of the sources of pollution include uh, construction work, for example, which is why the Supreme Court had ordered construction to be stopped in, in the past week or so. And uh, for example, uh, car pollu- vehicle <laughs> pollution is a big issue. Uh, so we have been organizing no cost Sunday events for that. And uh, another big issue is uh, cra- is the bursting of crackers on Diwali. For example, uh, even though there were cracker bans in place, uh, there was no strict implementation. People were bursting crackers all around the country. So I believe that rules and laws should be strictly implemented so that this problem can be solved. Right. And uh, have you been following the global climate strike? You must have been, right? Uh, I have been following the global climate strike. Uh, we often collaborate with the organizations such as Fridays for Future and Extension Rebellion in organizing protests. Right. And, and so we regularly hold protests on Fridays and regarding on the days when global climate strike occurs. But because the fact of the matter is just that the governments are still not doing anything about the issue of climate change. Uh, or, or in our culture, in the nation, in culture of a nation, for example, environment is usually held in a high regard and with treated with high respect. Right. Still, the government and all po- parties and many of the people treat environment with such low respect that it's suffering. And the thing is that um, COVID is the COVID nineteen pandemic is just a warning of what 
can be what destruction can be caused by nature if um, climate change finally does arrive and these are just warning bells of the armageddon that is waiting for us around the corner uh, also it's not it, there's no economic uh, there's no economic benefit in not dealing with climate change either because the government is facing several other problems uh, facing several other problems in which it has to spend lots of money uh, which are related to climate change for example there are lots of floods cyclones tornadoes storms in du- during which the government has to spend lots of money crores of rupees uh, to solve these problems in rescue ep- missions and relief efforts so the thing is that mm, there is an economic advantage to solving the climate crisis as well and those steps need to be taken urgently we are in contact with a few members of parliament and we are hoping to bring in a climate change law in the near future okay um and just as you said that you have been following the glo- global climate strike and the global climate mm-hmm. movement um how is the climate movement in india different from that taking place in other parts of the world have you seen any kind uh, of Okay. Ha. Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, there is a big difference in that sense, in the sense that uh, uh, global the global climate strikes uh, are organized by lots of people in across the world. But for example, in India, uh, uh, even though there are there are many people organizing and participating in the climate strikes. there is a problem in the sense that those climate strikes are not resulting in anything yet because the political leaders are not listening to us and so steps are not being taken also the thing is that uh, until climate change it does become a voting issue for many people and becomes a cause of concern uh, till then n- no steps no concrete steps will be taken to solve this uh for example regarding the air pollution crisis right now smog towers worth crores of rupees are being installed but those are very ineffective in, in regarding this uh, in regard to the scope of the air, air pollution crisis in new delhi uh and so i believe that if air pollution does become a voting issue for example then then the air pollution crisis in new delhi can be solved within the next 2 years or so and so i believe that's a difference in the situation of india and the other parts of the world and as a climate youth activist um how inclusive do you think the climate movement in india is have you seen people inclusive in it's inclusive in the sense inclusive inclusive as as in the sense like uh we all know although climate uh, climate change it's not that it is not going to affect those in the upper class or upper caste people it's just that the indigenous communities the one the farmers or 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 the the tribal communities those the the communities that will be hit by the climate change first and that yeah. will be bad right uh yeah uh you know the climate movement in india it's it's hard taking place in silos it it actually it seems like that so i think that uh, young climate activists they should do their bit or at least try to make it more inclusive in that sense do you think it is it inclusive the climate movement in india so i believe that the climate change movement in india right now is mostly re- restricted to the cities in the sense that uh, uh is mostly restricted in the city due to two reasons the first is that the f- fact is that those who are most at fault for climate change and the air pollution crisis are have access to air purifiers masks and are sitting inside their homes while those that who are least at fault for example the underprivileged they don't have access to air purifiers masks anything uh, i myself have to take a few steroid sprays regularly to uh, to uh, really to get relieved in the air pollution crisis and uh, so think about the plight of the people who are living on the streets also it, it is that climate change is not a topic which is widely known and addressed in india 
many of the people in rural areas and the farmers don't have a lot of awareness like, regarding climate change and that's not their fault there needs to be an awareness movement of sorts in which people can be made aware of the dangers and extent of the climate change phenomena so, uh, so that more people can come and act right now those who are suffering uh those who are suffering the most are least at fault and they are they don't even know what's going on right now so that's the problem um basically the awareness the lack of awareness is the top yeah that's big problem okay aditya i think uh, we have i have completed all my questions thank you for your time